Hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings to another series of our webinars dedicated to um, designing and co checking of steel connections and members. And this webinar is focused on our application Idea Statica member and we will tell you and show you about uh, how to treat stability analysis of R-shaped members. It's nice to have you here today. Uh, it's me, Adam, uh, introducing the series and I'm um, greeting Lucas as well. Lucas, how are you today? Hello, everyone. I feel really great and looking forward to show you what we are preparing. <laughs> Indeed, Lucas can't wait to do so. So uh, let me do this quickly just to inform you we are running on platform GoToWebinar and that means you are all muted by default but feel free to ask any questions in the question panel. Just type them in and we'll be answering them uh, back during the webinar and we'll try to uh, read out some of them at the end of this session. So for today's agenda, it's all about the stability issues um, that the program Idea Statica member solves. So it's about linear buckling of uh, members of beams, columns as well. Uh, you will learn about uh, global and local imperfections, what's the difference in between of them and uh, how to handle them. And then you will learn about uh, three steps of the analysis, the uh, MNA, materially nonlinear analysis, about the linear buckling analysis, and the, finally the second order uh, fully geometrical and materially nonlinear analysis including all the imperfections. So that's the uh, most advanced um, numerical solution available today worldwide and that's of course a part of the Idea Statica member program that we provide to you. Okay, that's for the introduction. Lucas, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, Adam. Okay, so I'm um, giving presenter to you. Turning of my webcam, so you have bigger Perfect. screen and the floor is yours. Thank you. So good morning, everyone, again, and welcome on the webinar. So uh, today, sorry, today we will be discussing the stability of the R-shaped members or R-shaped structures. Uh, let's say the arch, arch types of structures uh, include bridges or uh, foot bridges or structure covering a building with a subtle arch. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that. What uh, what does it mean and what we will be talking about uh, here uh, in Ideastica member. Uh, these structures can be designed and assessed uh, either by entering uh, the geometry directly in member or uh, uh, you can use a BIM link from the third party applications to get this, uh, this geometry. Uh, here you can see the arch substructure supporting uh, the bridge deck. This is the model which can be which can be exported to Idea Statica uh, detail from the third-party software, and uh, you will put boundary conditions as footing you can see, and uh, run these three steps uh, of the analysis which uh, were uh, or been mentioning uh, from Adam. Uh, what we will be talking about. Uh, or what are the problems uh, during the design uh, of R-shaped structures. Uh, you know, 
uh, the effect of boundary conditions and uh, how to determine uh, the buckling clans. It can be the issue for this uh, or trouble with uh, for this type of the structures because for uh, let's say standard um, columns or beams, you know it. You know it from the uh, from the code because uh, it's been literatured and uh, it's been published. But for uh, arc structures or r shape structures uh, it's not so obvious uh, we will talk about the global and local loss of the stability what does it mean uh, what are the differences and uh, um, how to work with uh, with the global and local stability um, how to approach to the local buckling factor yeah if you if you run a linear buckling analysis and uh, you get a really low buckling factor uh, how you handle with that or uh, what's the approach to to uh, get the proper results or to get the proper analysis and uh, how to resolve it <clears throat> or uh, generally footings and foundations or uh, boundary conditions uh, generally they have uh, very big effect on uh, the stressor distribution and the loss of the stability of these type of the structures uh, and for let's say hot rolled sections or open open sections uh, there there is uh, trouble with warping and yeah. you have to consider the seven degrees of the freedom so it's a it's a warping so <clears throat> uh, we, will, we will be talking about these topics about these problems and how to how to how to handle with uh, this this uh, problems uh, i have uh, selected a program rfm um, we have also been links with uh, with many third party applications but uh, i selected uh, this one and uh, i would like to show you how it works on the really simple model uh, it's an arc with the length 20 meters and the camber uh, approximately 5 meters i have eye profile uh, and uh, the element in the application rfm uh, this is a beam which is a six degrees of the freedom uh, the boundary conditions uh, are fully fixed and uh, i consider uh, some line load in the center in the center of the arc uh, what is very important if you if you want to do the export uh, to Ideastica member uh, it's really important uh, to get the global imperfection if you have some global structure and you want to export only some part of the structure yeah because the global imperfections are on the global structure on the whole structure and uh, you have to you will export only let's say some part uh, which is which is critical for you so uh, for this moment we want we won't consider a global imperfection because we have uh, only the arc uh, which is loaded in the vertical plane and uh, <clears throat> we will handle with the local local imperfections right uh, linear buckling analysis uh, if you know, uh, if you're familiar with the analysis, uh, like a linear buckling analysis for 1D elements for beams, so uh, you know you get you get uh, some eigenvectors or some critical critical uh, factor, uh, which um, gives you gives you um, hint uh, by what what load will structure uh, lose the stability uh, from the RFM. Uh, for my uh, combination, I've got I've got uh, the factor 1.72. It's a really low it's a really low factor, and you can see how uh, the structure is buckled for in for the first mode shape. It's uh, out of the plane of the arc, and the second mode shape uh, it's a typical sinusoid uh, wave. Critical, uh, critical factor according according to euro code uh, this is the this is the uh, let's say claim from uh, from the euro code that the first order analysis may be used for the structure uh, if if the increase of the relevant internal forces or moments or any other change of structure behavior caused by deformations can be neglected these conditions may be assumed to be fulfilled if the following criterion is satisfied. 
you can see it as the alpha factor. Uh, it's a critical factor for elastic analysis has to be higher than the 10. For plastic analysis has to be higher than the 15. And in our structure, we have a critical factor 1.72 for the first mode shape, 4.8 for second mode shape. So it means that we have to have to consider we have to consider um, some higher lever of the analysis. How to do that? How to do that? So uh, I will go to the model and show you what loads and what combinations uh, I was considering. So let me go to RFM model. You can see this is my this is my model. I have pre-calculated, but I will show you what I have. I have uh, three load steps. The first way, uh, the first uh, load case is uh, self-weight. The second load case is uh, superimposed dead load with the value of 30 kilonewton per meter, and uh, the third load case because I uh, consider that this is the let's say bridge uh, bridge. So uh, there is a tandem system and the UDL which are which are say transformed to to uh, uniform distributed load 50 kilonewton per per meter. So uh, you can see the load. I have created a combination. The combination looks like this. Yeah, this is 40.5 kilonewton of uh, per, uh, superimposed dead load and uh, 67.5 kilonewton per meter of uh, this is the design value of the tandem system and the uniform distributed load. Um, I will calculate it. And what I have also did, the stability analysis. Uh, you know, so many softwares uh, offer to you, offer to you uh, to that you can, or you have some model, some some add modules, uh, like in RFM, where you can where you can do the analysis, like a stability analysis, to get the critical factor. Uh, my critical factor is 1.72. How I mentioned, how I mentioned um, on the slide. This is the first mode shape, and this is the second. You can see out of plane. The third is also out of plane. Some bending mode shapes, right? So uh, let's move. Let's move to Ideastica. Ideastica member. So what I have to do, I have to select all structure. And uh, you can see I'm showing you right now the completely new feature, which will be released in a couple of days. Uh, it's Idastica Checkbot. It's a, it's an application which is mirroring your, your <clears throat> finite element model from the third party softwares. So you can see this is a completely new interface and I can select connection or member. I will use member and uh, you can display all internal forces from all load cases. So it's really transparent. So uh, not a black box or uh, you get some, some values. You can control it with your, with your third party software. And what is really important from this interface you can link to the connection or to the member, so you have everything under control. <clears throat> right now, is creating is exporting uh, the model with with the geometry, uh, with the cross section, uh, with uh, internal forces, and uh, from the you can see, yeah, we are fi we have finished the export, and here are the connections. I can launch it. You can see if I put transparent view so you have a numbering of the nodes and also the numbering of the members but you know I have member and I have to define some boundary conditions and the boundary conditions uh, it will be footing right so I have to go to the connection so I click on it but at first I forgot um, to select the combination for our purpose, I created only one combination for ultimate limit state, but you can create uh, many of them, right? And um, 
you will go to the loads where here is a load configurator where are displayed all internal forces uh, sorry or all, all load cases and all combinations you can see i will consider for a result class only one combination right now so i will click on the connection and go to the connection design because i have to calculate if my footing uh, will be will be fulfilled all code checks so we are going to we are going to uh, idastica connection and you can see this is uh, part of the of the arc and i will create uh, the concrete block and the footing okay so I have created or predefined some template. It's my template. I will use it. Uh, it's my default vault, default concrete grade, C25 slash 30. So I will upload it. And you can see this is my concrete block, uh, anchors, and uh, some wideners. But I a little bit change. The geometry of the wilderness of the wilderness uh, so the thickness will be 20 millimeters the width 150 millimeters and the shape won't be chamfered by the triangle and yeah i'm satisfied and i can run the analysis right now uh, i will get the results result from uh, cbfm cbfm engine so <clears throat> You will know if the combination, if all internal forces has been transferred and all code checks passed. You can see anchors 95.9%. It's, it's this anchor. I can see the results in the check. Go to the equivalent stress. Uh, generally, you can see the plates are or has a low equivalent stress and uh, the main or major utilization is for anchors right Let's see here 95.9 percent if i check it here this is the anchor a3 right so i can check what is happening here but for me it's important that everything passed right now i can see the deformed shape and the stress in concrete i will change the scale and this is my deformed deformed shape and some pressure some pressure here okay i will save it and close it right now i have created the footing and now it's time uh to go to the member to export the structure to member you can see my connection passed it's here and here are here are all the results and all the members if you change the cross section or everything else can be synchronized yeah, so all loads if you change something in the rfm uh, you can synchronize it and you will get immediately recalculation and uh, new results yeah. Okay, so I click on the member and uh, continue continue uh, to the application member where all selected members will be exported. But before I do it, I would like to show you or mention to you um, some, some uh, comments to, to the model what we are considering and uh, what we are using for calculation. So a numerical model in the Idastica member using a shell element. So your 1D element is transferred to shell elements. Uh, boundary conditions, if you select the footing, uh, we are considering a winkler pasternak subsoil model with all stiffnesses uh, of the plates, anchors and welds which uh, affect 
your 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 stiffness your stiffness and uh, generally your boundary conditions and also if you are using a shell elements the warping effect is uh, is is captured <clears throat> so in the rfm if i used 1d element so the warping or 7 degrees of freedom won't be turned on because he doesn't have it and if you are using a shell elements it's automatically it's automatically captured and considered right so i can go to member you can see this is the interface of the member where uh, i've got the analyzed members they are split it they are split it to segments like in rfm and what i have to do i have to connect connect uh, the discretized member because you can see here in every node you have to do some connection or some uh, some joint you have to connect it somehow i will use the welds uh, the bot welds right okay uh, i will scroll it down select the connection and I have to edit the connection number 23. Uh, I can continue to, to, to connection where do only one operation, cut, and uh, create, create a butt weld. After that, the software automatically recognize the topology and you can only copy that to every, to every node. So it's, uh, nice and smooth way uh, how to how to connect all the discretized uh, part of the arc so i create new operation you can see all internal forces are imposed here select the operation i would like to cut member one cut by member two but the cutting method will, will be miter cut and I can select, of course, um, some uh, some welds, but uh, for for a miter cut, you can select only butt weld. So it looks like this. It's fixed, and I will save it, and I can close it. You can see it disappeared because it's it's connected and right now I can use a copy operation. So I will select the other node and recent connection applied. And I will apply it to all nodes. It depends uh, if you discretize the model a lot. So you have to you have to use so many, let's say recent connections to bond it so uh, i will do it really really quickly so it it means that uh, if you create one one connection and uh, the software find out uh, the similar topology of your joint so you can apply it and you don't have to create a new and new connection again and again so it save your time and yeah i'm finishing and the note number three you can see this is my my footing i have created the arc my analytical model or numerical model sorry with the footings uh wideners all the connections are welded with butt welds it behaves like a one uh, one um, continuous member and i can continue to the check you can see in the ribbon we have three type of the analysis at first material nonlinear analysis linear buckling analysis and geometrical and material nonlinear analysis with the imperfection so 
I will run the first step. It's a material nonlinear analysis. I will come back to presentation to show you something about about the material nonlinear analysis. Uh, what assumptions we consider? Uh, we consider as in connection, if you know the application, limit plastic strain of the 5%. Uh, we consider a bilinear material diagram uh, with the small small hardening or small inclination of the hardening. So you can see the modulus elasticity uh, divided by 1000. So it's due to the numerical numerical stuff. And uh, the Young modulus is, uh, because this is the material nonlinear analysis, the, uh, the Young modulus is dependent on the, on, on the strain. And we are using for solving that the newton raphson method. So if I come back, if I come back to uh, member, you can see it was very really fast. And uh, I've got the stresses, strain, and the deformation. Uh, on the right part of the window, you can see the equivalent stress. And the maximum or the peak of the stress is uh, in the head of the arc, right? Or in the maximum uh, distance vertical um, is here. And the value is 82.7%. Um, if I check the deflection, and uh, you know I have different boundary conditions than in RFM, so I consider different deformation. Here is the value six millimeters. If I come back to RFM and show you the combination and show you the total, so yeah. It's a total in, in, in the Z direction, sorry. Uh, I will show you the deformation in the Z direction. The value is 4.7 millimeters, but we are considering, a, let's say, fixed support. And right now, there is play a role, uh, some of the stiffness of the footing. So this is the reason why the summation of the, of the displacement or displacement generally is higher than uh, in the 1D member for in the RFM. Uh, right now, it's time, it's time to uh, run the linear buckling analysis. But what you can also do, you can also display the reactions or the internal forces. If I try to display it, you can see or select normal force because from the stresses are let's say integrated uh, the normal force and due to the boundary conditions, you can see I have, this is my value of the bending moment, 268.5 uh, in the maximal or in the camber and uh, 135.8 kilonewton, uh, kilonewton meter uh, in the footing. If I compare it with the, RFM, go to the moment, yeah, it's here. You can see the value is higher. This is this is why. Uh, the reason is that we are considering the footing, so the real stiffness. So the redistribution, if the forces of of internal forces will appear, also it has to it has to be reflected in the camber of the of the arc, right? So this is the reason why, and right now I will go to the linear buckling analysis and we will get the critical factor. So I will run it, come back, come back to presentation and uh, introduce to uh, a little bit what is, what is behind the theory, uh, the linear buckling analysis for shells. In terms of the mathematics, uh, this is the problem of finding out uh, the eigenvalues. Uh, you can see that uh, this is the equation which is solving. There is a stiffness matrix and the geometrical uh, stiffness matrix, and we are trying to find a lambda factor. A lambda factor is the factor of the. It's it's a critical factor. So um, yeah, the factor lambda 
by which the design loading uh, would have to be increased to cause plastic instability in a global model. So you can compare on the left side is the output from the RFM and on the right side this is the output from uh, from Ideastica member. You can see that the factors are a little bit different. Uh, this is the reason is uh, that we are using shells and also there is considering uh, the warping, so the factor is a little bit increased due to due to uh, these effects. I will come back to member and show you the shapes, the mold shapes. The first mold shapes is uh, out of plane. I will turn off the internal forces. Increase the deformation to show you how it's deformed. Yeah, put here 30 percent and uh, we will see how it's deformed. You can see this is the first first mold shape out of plane first bending mold shape and from let's say from this if you would like to let's say use an analytical solution you can see a critical buckling clamp yeah, it's from the from this here is a changing changing of the of the uh, curvature so this is my let's say critical length if you would like to use some analytical solution for your calculation but we are we are in the member so uh, we will use a numerical solution so the second mode shape, I would like to show you also the second mode shape. What is very really important that the mode shapes are the same as uh, as in the RFM, because it's very really important. Uh, if the mode shape is completely different, there is something, there is something wrong. So you can see how the shells is uh, rotated. Yeah. And yeah, this is my mold shape. Okay, now it's time to put in perfection and uh, run the geometrical and material nonlinear nonlinear analysis uh, with the imperfection. I I will put the imperfection and uh, tell you why the imperfection uh, has this value 144 millimeters for the first mold shape. And uh, we step up to second step of the analysis. Okay, I will do it and I will run it. I will come back to presentation and uh, tell you what is behind. So <clears throat> if you're counting uh, geometrical nonlinear analysis so you are you are doing it in the iterative uh, with the iterative um, method so you have to use uh, some uh, solution which will solve it and we are using a newton robson method uh, the structure is deflect or is imperfect uh, due to the imperfection so uh, you are trying to find out the equilibrium on the imperfect structure so you are solving uh, the equation in the point two, where the stiffness is dependent on the deflection. So <clears throat> what is very really important? What what imperfection you should you should use? So you have let's say I don't I don't say uh, I don't want to say three options, but you have more options. But I will tell you three. You can use this buckling curve tap. From the from the error code or from different code, uh, and uh, the table give you a hint what imperfection put there. So you know, I used this table. Uh, so my imperfection is dependent on the buckling curve. Okay, you can see it's a zero, a, b, c, and d, and uh, my cross section is uh, has a buckling shape or buckling curve C. It means if I come back to RFM, 
go to the cross section. Go to the inf information, scroll down. I can see that for Euro code in the y direction, we are we are we are using B buckling curve and uh, perpendicular to the z direction, we are using C. So it means that the buckling curve, what we are using is the buckling curve C. This is the reason why I've selected this part and we are using a plastic analysis. So uh, my total length of the arc is 22 meters divided by this value, I will get 146 millimeters, put it to the table and run the nonlinear analysis. And uh, these two, two values or two inputs are really important for you. Uh, the other steps are solving by, by the solver. So I would like to show you what happened. You can see 100% of the load has been applied and I have zero, zero uh, plastic strain. But what is important, if you saw before, the equivalence, maximal equivalence stress was 83.3 megapascals. But right now, we are getting the maximal value 161.8 megapascal. Yeah. Let's see it's here. And this is this is the reason why why to use the geometrical nonlinear analysis because uh, you are solving you are solving um, let's say or your output right now is in the form of the stress and strain and you're solving only the step um, only the step or only uh, if the material doesn't reach uh, the yield stress. So you can see we have we are still on the elastic branch. Okay. I will come back to presentation to recap it, what I told. Um, both open and closed profile arch structures are susceptible to loss of the stability. Uh, as you know, so, so many analytical solutions can be very difficult or in some cases it's even impossible. So there is a ne uh, necessity of a numerical solution or more advanced method. Uh, if the critical factor or critical load factor is low, so you can use elastic analysis, but you have to be aware of some, of some, uh, some effects or uh, but it's better it's better to use uh, more detailed analysis like plasticity or uh, geometric nonlinearity. It's also a recommendation from the code if we are talking about the euro code about the euro code. Uh, so with what is very important for you that if you would like to use Idastica member, you have to know only two inputs. you have to know uh, you or one input and it's a buckling curve. Uh, thanks to thanks to the let's say more advanced uh, analysis like a geometric and material nonlinear analysis with the imperfection, uh, you only control the stresses and strains in your mate material. As a stability is guaranteed by geometrical nonlinear calculations. So uh, this is the recap. Let me let me uh, pass the word to Adam and uh, we can check we can check the q a yes i'm back taking the screen so uh you've sent a pretty couple of questions i'm trying to answer them during the webinar and so to read some of them loud and i will ask lucas to answer them so i've picked three of them 
interesting questions that should uh, um, all of you benefit from. Um, so Christopher is asking, hello, is it enough to determine imperfections only for the first shape? or should uh, the other specific shapes be uh, calculated or he, he says respected to thank you I, I think i think it's a very it's a very interesting it's a very interesting question um you know um, if you if you were getting um i will come back here if you were if you were getting uh, from the linear buckling analysis the factor which is very close uh or let's say the first first factor or first mode shape uh let's say buckle only only or there will lose the stability only some uh, some flange or something like that and you are you're handling with the stability of the comp of the whole structure so you have to let's say put the imperfection to the different to the different uh, mode shape so you have to check many many uh, factors and it's up to you to select what are important for you but uh, some clue for you uh, if you have uh, cross-section class 4 it's better it's better to uh, get more factors or more mode shapes and put more uh, imperfection amplitude to more uh, mode shapes yeah. it can be the clue for class number four but uh, for uh, class one point and three you can uh, you have to check the deflect shape or uh, the eigenvectors how how it looks uh, the shape and uh, select what what or where put uh, the imperfection Okay, thank you, Luca. So another question from Esther. Uh, is it possible to apply loads on the upper or lower flange of a beam or just on the axis of a beam? Yeah, let me let me share my screen. Let me share my screen, Adam. I will take it. Uh -huh. uh, I can I can show you uh, that it's possible to put the load uh, in the bottom up or to the center line. If you run the application member, <clears throat> I hope you will see my screen, Adam. Can you confirm it with the application with the starting application? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So I will create a completely new project because you can create your, how I mentioned, you can create your project from scratch. Um, and let's say I will, I will use this. I will name it under the name and uh, show you that you can put it on the top flange, bottom flange, or to the center line. Yeah, it's possible. You can see it's on the top. You can you can change it. You will put it to the bottom, or you can put it to the member axis. Uh, it looks like this. So I think this is the answer. Okay, thank you, Lucas. And the third one, uh, Mohammad is asking uh, which software, which softwares work with member, uh, the BIM links. And yeah. he adds ETAPs. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very, it's very important to mention it that uh, if you go to IDASTICA web page, go to the BIM links, and uh, you can find here what third-party softwares we are supporting. And uh, for IDASTICA member, I mention I am meaning uh, the steel. We are. We have a link with the sub 2000 with the robot rfm start pro etaps robot structure analysis cia engineer rfm axis and that's it yeah these these applications we are supporting 
Uh, I would like to mention also that we have an application Ideastica uh, member for concrete, where uh, we are supporting we are supporting six um, finite element softwares like SAP 2000, uh, RFM, ETEPS, CI Engineer, Axis. Yeah. So I think that's all. Adam, next mm -hmm. question. Okay. Well, that's it. I think I would conclude this webinar. So let me take back the presenter and jump back to the presentation. So the most interesting questions were answered. We have answered almost all the questions uh, in the chat as well. So now to wrap it up, um, after this webinar, uh, please fill the short survey that will pop up on your screen. There were many questions about recording and presentation uh, in PDF if we provide that. So let me uh, uh, answer this loudly to all of you. We will not provide the PDF of the presentation, but this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available from tomorrow on in our webpage in the webinar section and on our YouTube channel, Idea Starica. Uh, and it will stay there hopefully forever. Uh, so you can um, watch it, share it anytime as you like for free, of course. Replay it. So that's for the recording. Uh, you can, of course, try out the program uh, by downloading the free trial version. It has full functionality and works for two weeks. So you can test it out. And last, uh, I would like to mention our support center at the webpage ideastatica.com where you can find the section webinars and other um, documents that we provide. There's a lot of uh, tutorials, articles, blog um, articles, case studies, verifications, and so on. All for free, available for you. So what about the upcoming webinars? Uh, we are just about releasing new version of our software, Ideastatica 21.1. This will happen um, on Friday. So there will be uh, the release webinar following uh, on October 15th, where we will inform you about all the news, what we have developed for this new version. And there's a lot. So feel free to come. And 3rd of November, there'll be a concrete webinar on interesting topic. That's still far away, but you can um, assign this to your uh, schedules or diaries or whatever if you like so good so thank you very much for attending this webinar today hope um, you've learned something and um, looking forward to seeing you on some other webinars that will prepare for you have a nice day bye 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 bye